Hello, my name is John McPherson and I'm a retired graphic designer, sometime musician, and I tend to talk in what's generally referred to as an educated Scottish accent. It was particularly popular in London eh, as a salesman, as we Scots do have a little sort of lilt to our voice. We talk in acceptable tunes that people find sometimes amusing, certainly listenable, and all we have to do then is get them to buy the thing, whatever it is. Whereas when I come back up to Glasgow, I find myself speaking more with Glaswegians and it on it, it it all, you know, uh, right? And uh, sometimes uh, even I can, you know, try something just with a saying, you know, because it's that quite I mean, they just come out with a rattle away, you know, and you don't know what they're saying half of the time. But after about ten minutes talking to them, then I'm talking away like that as well, you know, and it's just like, as if the whole thing is in a different set of voices, and it's just because. I tend to adopt the voice of whoever I'm talking to. That's great fun. I'm not out with Australians, you know. Oh, Jesus. They talk away like that. I'll find myself following them without even being asked to. And they don't even mind. But the difference in an Australian and a New Zealander. See, a New Zealander. So likes from where are you from? Likes being. Likes have been pointed out where they're from. Australian just assume you're going to guess it. So if you can guess in New Zealand, you made a friend. Same as Scots and English, Canadians and Americans. If you guess the smaller one, you made a friend. And the difference is New Zealanders go up at the end of a sentence, Australians usually go down. And anyway, is that it from me? I thought I was going to have to read from a script or something like that. Just make it up with you going along. Let's the way to do it. Do you get, he, he's from Lensing. Ah. He's not from Glasgow at all. Well, I've lived many years in Glasgow. Uh, he's from a wee Edinburgh. island called Lewis and Harris, which is actually one big island. And, uh, yeah, you can say that from. Great Britain's one big island. Scotland's not exactly part of England, is it? I hope he realises that because he's not wearing a microphone, this bit won't come out at all. <laughs> Took me a wee while to realise that. Anyway, so there'll be some silent bits in here while Alan was soliloquising. <laughs> but I don't know uh, if there's anything else. You, you see, that's the sort of voice I usually speak in. And, uh, but... Educated I, I, Scottish. It's called educated. Well, in London, that's how it's referred to in sales. They, I used to sell advertising space, and these people used to refer to themselves as spacemen. And I think that was a wee bit glorious, you know. I want, I'll travel through the universe, through Jupiter and Mars. I want to be a fireman. I don't know what, space ball. But a very popular accent. In most parts of England you can understand what they're saying. I don't know if you've investigated many English accents, but the worst one is from Birmingham. If you took me with the baby, you could say it. No problem, you can understand what you're saying. I once had the opportunity to sell some advertising business, and it was, you know, about two, three grand or something, a big advert. But the person I had to speak to, worked in a company in Birmingham, so when I phoned up, the receptionist, and I could hard, and I said, could I speak to Mr. Turner? And, and nothing seemed to happen. Eventually, after a few attempts, I was told by everybody else, don't ever phone Birmingham under any circumstances, you know, that's just not worthwhile. So, but, given advice like that, of course, I was one to persist. So I'd phone back and I once got past the receptionist. That was the receptionist for the company. And then I got to his secretary, who spoke like... And after a bit of persistence, I managed to get through to the person himself, who said, Hello, Turner here. 
being Scottish. And so, of course, I sold him an advert. And uh, that was fine. I could, call, I could speak to him, could understand him. I told him of his banal secretary, he says, Oh, I know, but you have to put up with them. And so, uh, Scotsmen do get around all over the place. If you can get through it as Scotsman, you can do the deal. But other than that, there, was not, there were notices on the wall. Do not ever speak to Birmingham under any circumstances. And uh, despite <laughs> me actually managing to sell the advert, I thoroughly condone that. There is no point in going through the effort that's required to deal with people from Birmingham. Uh, well, other parts of Britain, most of them are all right. <laughs> but the money is all in London. The anyway, well, I hope... London. Well, uh, yeah. That's, that's why I call it's it two black cities no, sort of contained in the yeah, circle line, but around it there are a hundred towns and there are so many different accents and regionalities. There are areas where there are more people uh, not of British origin than of British origin in certain areas in London. And I didn't mind that. I'm, I'm cosmopolitan, I'm Glaswegian. I'd go around quite happily talking to local people in local pubs. But there was a tradition. In most pubs, the public bar was black and the lounge bar was white. But the public bar had the pool table, and that's what happened. And when they looked at me coming in and winning a few matches of pool, which annoyed them a bit, I would tell them, about the Highland clearances and tell them that I hate the English as much as they do. And so I then became a, an honorary, whatever you're allowed to say, are you allowed to say black person? And I went to their blues parties and I hung about with these guys and, you know, no problem. But uh, the English couldn't do that. Anyway, have we finished yet? When do we get paid for this gig is the usual next line. Oh, yeah. <laughs>